My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. There is a moment in Jesus' life that we read about in the Gospels when the Pharisees try to make him look bad in front of the people. Well, actually, it's not just making him look bad. They want to catch him saying something incorrect. They want to catch him saying something scandalous to get him in trouble. Jesus was attracting many people. He was considered to have more authority than the Pharisees, who had always been the experts in Jewish law. And many of the Pharisees were not happy with this. They were not happy with all the attention, with all the, the followers that Jesus was getting. So they would plan out tough questions that might get Jesus in trouble. So, in this particular instance, the Pharisees approach Jesus, and before they ask him that difficult question, they, they flatter him. They say, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. So they, they flatter him. They say, you are, you are a truthful man. You always teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Imagine if someone started off praising you in that way. You know, our, our, our pride might, might rise a little bit. You know, get, get a bit inflated or a lot inflated. And what it does is it adds pressure to you to give an answer. And to give a good answer, right? Or maybe it, it could also give you more confidence, right? But maybe getting you overconfident. Anyway, they flatter him. And then here comes the question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? The emperor being the Roman emperor. And this is a tricky question. This is a very tricky question. Jesus this is not just an, a study of scripture. This is, this is a conversation. It's a time of prayer that we're having with you. And they came to you and they asked you a tough question. They're trying to corner you. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? If Jesus says that it is lawful to pay the tribute, then he could be seen as being a collaborator with the Roman occupiers, right? Because the Romans are, they, they have conquered. They, they, they are occupying that land. Now, if he says that the tribute is not legitimate, then he risks being branded as a political criminal. You know, and they could, they could, they could go to the Romans and say, he is, he's, he's stirring up the people. Right? So, really... With either answer, Jesus could be getting into some serious trouble. Lord, they thought that they had you cornered. But of course, trying to corner Jesus, the Son of God, is, is usually not a good idea. <laughs> so Jesus, what he does is he asks them for a coin. And he asked for a denarius. And he says, whose image is on it? And the answer is Caesar's. And so Jesus replies to them saying, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Now, there, there's a lot there that we could talk about. But, but he stumps them, right? We read in the Gospels, they were utterly amazed at him. 
right? Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. They were utterly amazed at him. There's, there's this amazement that being in awe of God, being in awe of Jesus. Jesus, we come to this time of prayer to learn from you, to, to contemplate you, to be in awe of you. To be in awe of Jesus, the all-powerful creator of the world, who has come down to our level in that he has taken on human nature. He's the creator of the world and he's my friend. And he's my savior. And he's the true son of God. Now, I want to continue reflecting on and praying about being in awe of God. But before I do so, I want to go back to the coin for a moment, the denarius. There's something very significant here. This denarius, this coin, had the profile of the face of the emperor. In fact, we still have this coin. You can you can look it up online and, and you can see pictures of it. And the inscription on the coin reads, Caesar Augustus Tiberius, son of the divine Augustus. And this is very interesting. Son of the divine Augustus. Augustus had been divinized. He was considered to be a god. And his son, Tiberius, okay, is thus the son of the divine, or the son of God. So the coin has the image of someone, Tiberius, who claims to be the son of God. And that coin is being handed over to the actual son of God, right? An amazing thing, you know. Um, it really, we can just be in awe. The Lord, gosh, you, you, you think of everything, Jesus. You take care of all the details. I, I think in the scene, it's 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 God having a little fun too, you know. <laughs> it's not just a coincidence, right? He did that on purpose, and that's something worth being in awe of, of of, of kind of growing in that wonder of God. How great is our God that he even thinks of those details, you know? Am I in wonder when I contemplate God's kindness to me? When I reflect on your desire, Jesus, to teach, to understand, to cure, to forgive. Jesus, you do it over and over and over again. We we observe creation, how beautiful creation is, to be in awe of of the, the great magnitude, how big you know the mountains are, or um, but but also how how and all the tiny tiny little details, microscopic details. Lord, you make the sun come up over and over and over again, and you do it for me, and you do it for each person. Jesus, you've placed people by my side who have helped me, who pray for me over and over again many times in my life. Thank you, Lord. You are so great. Let's foster this desire to grow in, in awe of God. How great is our God. How awesome is our God. Once I was talking to somebody who who had had a big conversion in his life. He had grown up in a very difficult situation, surrounded by lots of violence, and so had, um, had, had done terrible acts of violence himself. Um, and there was a moment in his life, a very special, concrete moment, in which, in which God gave him a very special grace, and there was an instantaneous conversion where he became aware of how much God actually loved him. And God forgave him. Always forgives him. But forgave him for what he had done. And he had done some terrible things. And his heart was changed in an instant. 
And he fell in love with God. He fell in love with you, Jesus. And he understood that you have come to save him, that you've come to save each one of us. And this person I was talking to, he, he expressed this great burning desire to worship God, to see him more clearly, to understand him more deeply, right? to be in wonder, to be in awe. And in fact, that's what you and I are called to do in heaven forever. And we can do it here too. And so may we always grow in, in awe of our awesome God. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.